Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Python series. In this episode, I'm going to introduce you to working with variables. Okay, so we've got the Python uh, code for the Hello World episode, episode one. And now for this episode, we have two options. We can either create a new project using PyCharm or we can just create a new file within the hello world folder. So if you want to just create a new file, you can do that. Just right click, do the same thing you did before. So right click new Python file, and we can call this one variables. And now it's going to create a new PY file. And you can have your code inside of here and then run it. Um, and you can run it using this, of course. And there we go. So it's gonna, And then it'll automatically configure it. And then you can run it using that every time. So that's one way you can do it. But otherwise, you can just create a new project uh, outright. So new project pure Python, Python project, and I'm just going to change mine to variables or Python variables. There we go. And the same thing here. We're not going to change anything. We're not going to do the welcome script template. Um, we're just going to create the new project and let's do that. All right. So we've got our new project created. Now we can go ahead and create the file that is going to represent our Python script for this episode. So new Python file variables. And now it's going to create the file and extend it with .py, so it's a Python file, okay? All right, so variables. What are variables? Uh, before I teach you variables, I'm going to show you something called comments. Comments are basically a way for you to add notes inside of your code that is ignored by the Python interpreter so that it won't mess with your code at all. Any comment that you have within your Python script is going to start with a hash or a hashtag. So as a test, we can do print Python sucks. And then we can have one that does not have a hash in front of it, so it's not a comment. So we'll just do print Python is really cool. So if you want to try guessing which one is printed out, obviously this one will be. So let's go ahead and prove that. Right click, run, and there we go. It says Python is really cool. So this one was ignored by Python when you ran the Python script here. And uh, this is because it's a comment. So that's because it's um, starting with a hash, okay? And if you want to, you can add comments onto the end of other statements so it's ignored. So you can put one here. So uh, this is another comment. So this one will also be ignored by Python. So we can go ahead and run this and nothing changes. And yeah, it's a great way to add notes to your code, especially if you know that other people are going to be reading your code. Um, you don't want to just create a giant program and then expect someone to immediately understand it just by reading it. So when you create your programs, you usually want to explain it with comments so that not only you, but other people can understand it in the future. Because a lot of the time I make programs in other languages like Java, and then I come back to the program like a couple months later and I have no idea what's going on because I didn't leave any comments. So this is a very, very useful thing that you're going to need to employ to make your programs more understandable. And I will be using them in these tutorials so that I can basically uh, lay out what I'm doing, what I'm teaching. So let's start here, okay? So we're going to create a new comment. We'll say variables. And so what are variables? Variables are names that hold data in your program. At this point, we don't know how to store data. Currently, if we want to print something out to the console, if we want to output something, we can just pass it directly into the print function. So if it's a string, you can surround it by quotes or single quotes. So we could say hello, right? We're passing it in and then we can also do numbers, uh, one, two, three, and that will print those things out. But there's actually a way we can store these things so that we can reuse them at any point. So instead of just passing it directly into print, we can go ahead and create a variable that holds that value. So it's essentially a name that you associate with a value that you're holding. So we're going to create a new variable called my underscore age. That's just the name of the variable. And the variable is going to have a value that you can assign to it. This can be a string. It can be a number. It can be whatever you want. And we're just going to put 20 because I'm 20 years old right now. So now what you have done is you've created a new variable named my age and that has the value of 20. OK, so any place that you use the my age variable, you're essentially doing the same thing as just putting 20. Let me show you. So if we do print 20, and then we do print my age, it will be the same thing twice because my age holds the value of 20. So essentially when you pass my age, the name of the variable into the print function, it's going to take the value and pass the value into the function behind the scenes, okay? So run this and it should say 20 and then 20, perfect. So again, a variable is a way of holding a value in your program, holding data. 
and it's associated with a name or a label that you can use wherever you want to use the variable. Let me give you some more examples. So let's say I want another variable called um, name. So my name is called Cody Simpson. There you go. And we can say other name if you want to. And we can do single quotes, Cody, or how about Billy Bob? This is just to demonstrate that you can, you can still use double quotes or single quotes. It doesn't really matter at all. And you can print these out if you want to. So name, print, other name, and run this. And we should get everything printed out. So 20, Cody Simpson, and Billy Bob. There we go. So the concept is pretty simple. Um, it's pretty awesome though, because it'll allow us to make our programs, programs more complex. Now we have a way of storing data. Another reason you may want to use a variable is if you're reusing the same value over and over and over. This is very common within programs. You're gonna have a value that you wanna store somewhere, and then you want to use it in many different places in your program. So it'd be kind of tedious to take, let's say that we wanna use 20 somewhere in our program. It'd be tedious to kind of just take 20 and place it everywhere in our program every single time we wanna use 20. Instead, we can have a variable called my age that holds the value of 20, and then put that everywhere that we would wanna use 20. And the benefit of that is if we ever want to change it from 20 to 25, we don't have to go every single place we're using 20 within our program and change it. We can just change the value of the variable and now everything is automatically changed because you're only assigning it in one place. Let me give you an example because that's a little overwhelming probably. So we have my age is equal to 25 currently and let's say that we want to do print my age, print my age, print my age, print my age. So we got four prints printing out 25 to the console. So run this and we got 25, 25, 25, 25. Now let's say that we want to change this from 25 to 50. So go ahead and run this again and we get 50, 50, 50, 50. So if we didn't have the variable that holds the value of 50, we would have to go into each of these and set it to 25 first. and then run this, and then it prints out 25, 25, 25, 25, no problem. But now if you wanna change it to 50, you have to go to each and every one of these and change it to 50, one by one. And now it outputs the same thing, but it was much more tedious to have to change. So if you were just to store that into a variable, all you have to do is change it in one place. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, but you'll see in the future where variables make sense. Everything will be a little mysterious as you first learn how to code, but um, as you code more and more, it'll make more sense. And now I'm gonna to demonstrate to you something called variable reassignment. This is when you create a variable with a value and then you change the value of that variable later on in the program. So let's say we have a variable called my favorite quote. And that's gonna be equal to good things come to bad people. Okay, and let's just tell that to the world. So we'll do print my favorite quote. if I can type correctly, <laughs> and then we'll add another one and just put my favorite quote. So what this should do is just set the value of the my favorite quote variable to good things come to bad people. And then we should output a message that says my favorite quote, followed by another message that hold, that outputs the value of the variable. So run this, and there we go. It says my favorite quote, good things come to bad people. So this is called initializing. And now let's go ahead and reassign this variable by giving it a different value. So you, essentially all you have to do is the same thing you did up here, okay? So we'll do my favorite quote is equal to, and let's change it to something else. We'll say, I like trains, because I, I do like trains, yeah? And then we're gonna print it out again. So we'll say this time, I changed my favorite quotes. And then we'll output my favorite quote again. So again, it's gonna output the value stored within the my favorite quote variable. So instead of, uh, being this twice, it'll be this once, and then it's gonna be this. So let's run this and find out. So there we go, it says my favorite quote, good things come to bad people, and then it says, I changed my favorite quote, I like trains. So even though we're using the same variable, we're printing out the same variable twice, because we reassigned it, we're getting different values printed out because they now have different values when you reassign it. So if I was to change this to something like my favorite quote two, now these are two different variables because they have two different names. So if you print this out, it says good things come to bad people, and then it says good things come to bad people again, because you're printing out the same variable twice. But you're never reassigning the first variable, you're just creating a second variable with a different name. But you're not printing that one out. But let me go ahead and change this back, so now it's the same variable being reassigned. 
So essentially, with the first time you create a new variable using a, a unique name and giving a new value, that's called an initialization. So you're initializing it with a new value for the first time. And then when you change the value of a variable that's already created, that's called reassignment, okay? So they look pretty much the exact same, but the terminology is a little different because at this point in the program, the variable did not exist. So you're initializing it and giving it that value. And at this point, it already exists, but you're reassigning it to I like trains. I like trains. Simple stuff. And that's pretty much the basics of uh, variables, but I'm just going to show you some more nuances about variables in case you're curious. So first thing I want to show you is naming rules. This is actually kind of important because uh, Python enforces some rules with variables that you need to follow. Okay, so rule number one, they must only be made of letters, numbers, or underscores. So every variable that you create can only contain, the name of the variable can only contain letters, numbers, or underscores, okay? And then two, they can only start with a letter or an underscore, not a number, okay? Simple enough. And then number three, variable names are case Sensitive, and I'll explain that one in a second if you've never heard that term before. Sensitive, there we go. So this is pretty easy to remember. You'll get used to it as you make more and more programs using uh, variables, which is pretty much every program that you're gonna make. So here's some examples of valid names of variables. So valid names are variable names that are, um, that are valid, obviously. So let's have a variable called Cody Simpson is equal to he really likes eating candy canes. Okay, that one's valid. And then let's have another variable called, and why is it valid? That's because variable names can be made of letters, numbers, or underscores. So if we added numbers, that would work. If we added underscores, that would work. Perfectly valid. So we can have another one called underscore Cody. So 20 is the value of that. Uh, this is because uh, variables can start with an underscore or a letter, but not a number. So if we change this to 23 Cody that is no longer valid and you know it's lo no longer valid because it's red. It's underlined with red. So anytime that PyCharm recognizes that you're doing something that goes against the Python language, it's going to go ahead and underline it with red to give you a warning and say that's not good. So if we were to run this and we got something called a syntax error within the output here that tells you that um, this is invalid syntax, meaning that you cannot use that. You cannot do that in the Python language. Okay. So another valid name would be XX Cody. 69 Simpson XX tacos. This is perfectly valid because you have letters, you have numbers, and you can even add underscores if you want to. It doesn't matter at all. As long as it does not start with a number, you're perfectly fine. And uh, yeah, just follow these three rules here. Okay. Last rule though is number three variable names are case sensitive. This one's less of a rule, more of like something that you should just know. Um, so let's say that we have two different variables. One is called uh, Bob. Bob has the value of 21. And then we have Bob in all uh, uppercase letters. And this one has the value of 24. So these um, have the same letters within them pretty much technically. But because they are two different cases, meaning this one's lowercase and this one's uppercase, they are two different variables. This is what is meant by case sensitive. So in this case, it's not reassigning Bob from 21 to 24. It's creating a whole new variable called Bob or screaming Bob and then setting it to the value of 24, okay? Same thing if we were to change this to uh, uppercase B, lowercase O, and uppercase B. This is a totally different variable than this one here, okay? Just be aware of that. And another thing I wanna show you, we're almost done here. I know I don't wanna overwhelm you guys like I said last time. So another thing I wanna tell you about is naming conventions. Naming convention, oops, naming conventions, conventions. And naming conventions are essentially rules that most developers follow, but are not required by the Python language so that um, the quality of your Python programs are, are better. So the naming convention for regular everyday variables that we create in our basic programs that we're learning about so far is it wants you to use something called snake case. Snake case, which means that every word in a variable name is separated by a, a underscore instead of a space because you cannot use spaces within variable names, obviously, because it's not a letter, a number, or an underscore, okay? So let me give you a, de a demonstration of that. Let's just go ahead and create a new variable. So I'm gonna call my variable 
this is snake case. And we'll set it to the value of like a snake. There we go. We can go ahead and print that out if we wanted to. And it says, awesome. So anytime you create a variable and it has multiple words within that variable name, just separate the words with underscores instead of spaces and then have everything else to be lowercase because that's the convention for standard variables. Later on, we're gonna learn about variables called constants. Constants are variables that you usually do not want to change within your program. In that case, you would have it all uppercase, but still snake case, so it's all separated by um, underscores, okay? And it's not enforced by the Python language, so if I was to remove these, um, my code is still perfectly valid. I just need to update this here. Perfectly valid except that it's less readable. So you can see why developers would want you to use this because it makes your code more readable and it's a good convention. It's a good um, guideline that you should follow to make your programs better quality. Okay, so last thing I wanna teach you about, very, very last thing is called multiple assignments. So this is when you create multiple variables at once, okay? So let's say we have a variable called A and we set it to the value of one so have another variable called b set it to the value of two and then c is equal to three. So you're creating three different variables all on three different lines, three different statements. A way you can make this more concise is by doing multiple assignment, having it done all at once. So you can do a comma b comma c is equal to and then set the initial values for these variables. So one, two, and then three. So now you've, set, you've essentially done the same thing you've done here except that you created it all in one line. So you're creating three different variables a, B, and C, and setting it to the values of one, two, and three. So obviously one is assigned to A, B has the value of two, and then C has the value of three. And you can do this for any other type that you want. So you can say name one, name two, Bob, oops, is equal to Bob and Joe. There we go. So we've created multiple variables on one line, essentially. All right, that's pretty much it for this episode. Now you know how to create variables using the Python language how to reassign variables, how to name them, the naming conventions of variables, how to do multiple assignments. So go ahead and play with that information. Go ahead and practice making some programs using variables and print it out and play with it and stuff like that before you watch the next episode so you can uh, remember all the details of this episode. Stay tuned for next episode where we're gonna learn about the different data types that you can store within variables. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video, although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers, so you can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can, get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I wanna tell you is that if you wanna support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members. And also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.